Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be going on an adventure to a very very beautiful nebula in our galaxy, the Milky Way. This nebula is essentially the result of a new engine in Space Engine that allows us to create these incredible new formations that you're going to see on the screen in a few seconds. Today we're going to be exploring the Omega Nebula. And so here is the Omega Nebula, also known as the Swan Nebula, the Horseshoe Nebula, or more properly Messier 17 or NGC 6618. This nebula was actually discovered um, close to 300 years ago by the uh, French astronomer Philippe Loyer de Chazot. And it was added to the Messier catalog in 1764 and later explored by the famous astronomer John Herschel back in 1860s. So we've known about this particular nebula for a really, really long time. Now you might be asking yourself, what are these blinking lights? And this is actually the result of new engine and interaction of stars in Space Engine. And uh, it's essentially kind of what happens inside nebulas when certain stars actually hide behind a tremendous amount of gas and sometimes become invisible, but sometimes reappear again. And although gas itself is not very easy to see here, this is kind of what it would look like if you were to fly through or close to this particular nebula. Now, what makes this particular nebula interesting to us is that, first of all, it's um, relatively new. It's actually less than a million years old. It's one of the newest formations in our galaxy. And at the same time, is one of the most active uh, areas or regions with new stars being created. As a matter of fact, we think this is probably one of the most active star forming regions of the Milky Way galaxy. But the total mass of this nebula is only about 800 masses of our Sun. So after all of the stars are created, there are going to be maybe a few hundred stars here, but not as many as say in some of the more massive uh, nebula, like for example, the Carina Nebula. Now, how big is this thing? Well, in terms of the size, or at least the length that you see on the screen here, it's about 15 light years in diameter. And at a distance of about 5,000 light years from Earth, it's actually not very easy to see this. As a matter of fact, if I were to actually retreat from this nebula and to move away to a distance of a few hundred or a few thousand light years, it would disappear pretty quickly. So it's not really that easy to see. This nebula also contains several star clusters, for example, NGC 6618. These star clusters are one of the main reasons why this nebula shines so brightly. These stars that are shining extremely brightly, as you see right here, are causing the gas to essentially be illuminated. Or actually, what happens here is that the gas gets excited, kind of like inside the neon lamp, and then re-emits various spectra of light, but more often red light, because for the most part, this nebula contains hydrogen. Nevertheless, though, the actual site created here is absolutely magnificent, extremely beautiful and very awe-inspiring. If we were to try to count how many stars there are here already, we would probably count approximately 800 or so, and 100 um, of these stars would be very, very powerful. And there are actually at least nine type O stars, which are some of the most powerful stars in the universe. Now, it's actually quite incredible that this free software allows us to actually see these incredible creations 
in so much detail, but also in such a spectacular view. This was never possible before with anything produced by even NASA. And luckily for us, Space Engine is actually available for free, so you can go and try this yourself as well. Now, before we actually finish, what I wanted to do is try to see if I can discover some kind of an interesting planet nearby where we can actually take a look at this particular nebula just to see what all of this looks like from there. So what we're going to do is maybe look for an interesting object nearby and try to land there. And I was actually able to find this beautiful object right here that has rings and interestingly two stars that are shining at it from two different directions. So the only night side we have on this planet is right there in the middle, which is actually really, really interesting because these are extremely rare planets. And if we look up into the night skies of this planet, we'll see the Omega Nebula right above us. And this is something that would be absolutely spectacular to see one day. Hopefully we'll make it here in the future. And I actually want to land on the surface of this planet so we can actually take a look at the nebula itself. But as you can see, it's kind of difficult to find the night side of the planet. There is actually not very, very much darkness here. This planet, for the most part, is illuminated by the two stars from both sides, which is really, really awesome. So here's actually one of the darker areas I was able to find, but even here, the brightness from two stars makes it relatively difficult to see the stars. But you do get to see the nebula nevertheless, and it's absolutely spectacular. This is something that one day maybe humanity will get to see as well. You even get to see the center of the Milky Way much easier from this distance because it is significantly closer to the center of the galaxy. And so this is kind of everything I wanted to show you in this video. And let's actually finish this video by seeing what happens to this planet as the two stars orbit around it and how the night cycle actually changes on it as the two stars illuminate it from both sides. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and wants to learn through video games and simulations, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Space out, and as always, bye bye.